Hello and welcome to Allen East High School for the start of the 2023 girls high school soccer season. The Kenton Wildcats make the trip over to take on the Allen East Mustangs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. And Evan, it's hard to believe, but the calendar's turned. It is August. The high school sports season is back underway, and I'm very thrilled to be here calling games with you to start the year on WOSN. Back in the booth, man. I'm really excited for high school sports. I mean, this is the best time of year as the weather starts to cool down. Still have some of those hot days, but it's kind of breezy out here. It's a beautiful day for some soccer and a doubleheader. Girls first, boys coming up later. Can't wait for the night. It is a football Friday night as soccer will take center stage to get the season underway. Allen East with the kickoff. It's going to be controlled around the midfield by Ryland Jones. Ryland, nice feed up into the back, through the back line. Allen East quickly working towards the center. Centers the ball just high over the goalpost. First shot a little bit off. It's we're going to have a goal kick for the Kenton Wildcats. And that's good two-man action by the two leading scorers of the team last year. Ryland Jones with the shot, 31 goals, 18 assists last year. Aubrey Young, the one passing her the ball. It was 22 goals and 14 assists for her last year. And a lot of experience for this Allen East team that finished 11-6-1. They scored 3.8 goals, 4, and gave up 2.4 last season. They did exit early uh, in the first round of the playoffs, but it's a team that is continually getting better year after year, a very young program, and I'm really looking forward to see what the Mustangs can do this season. A little defense now for the Mustangs. That one's going to go out of bounds. Throw in coming for the Wildcats. Take a look at the starters for today's game. First for the Kenton Wildcats. In goal, they're going to start number zero, Ruby Steyer. <clears throat> number two, Addie Haudenshield. And number six, Addison Brindenstein. Number seven, Emma Hugendobler. Number eight, Kyla Bostatter. Number nine, Mia Musser. Or Musser, excuse me. Number 11, Jessica Wood. Number 17, Reese McKinnis. Number 18, Trinity Tracy. Number 20, Chloe Hattery. And number 21, Josie Swimmer. We see the goalie for Kenton with the big kick back across midfield. Jones is doing a great job in the midfield, though, early on. You saw her initiate the first buildup. The goal didn't or the ball didn't go in the goal. And then right there, she had a lot of space in the midfield. She worked it all the way through and got in behind the defense. And here come the Mustangs once again. As you see. Dylan Miller now working along that right channel. That one's going to get kicked back up. The Wildcats trying to get back up towards midfield and get it back into their own end. Wildcats, on the other hand, a team that finished 9-8-1 last season, but they have lost a lot of their production on the offensive end. In fact, their first, second, third, fourth, and fifth leading scorer all graduated last season. They only have one senior on the entire roster, and that's Angel Forrester. So they're going to look to Kinsey Spring, um, who was their sixth leading scorer last year for a lot of production, but a lot of youth here that are just getting some of their first action at the varsity level. Another throw-in coming for the Mustangs. We'll take a look at their starters. Number three, Aubrey Young. Number five, Madison Jackson is back in goal. Riley Jordan, number six. And number seven, Megan Kohlinger. Number nine, Brown Schaefer. Number 11, Lydia Payne as the Mustangs out on the breakaway. That one just a little bit wide. As you see, number 12, Ryland Jones had another great look. And the Wildcats are going to have to figure out a way to mark her. You don't want her to continue to get opportunities because she's eventually going to cash those in. You're absolutely right, Nate. Right now they're giving her a lot of space in midfield, and she's able to carry the ball forward. And she's got a lot of speed, and she's been able to put the ball behind the defender and run onto it, creating a lot of nice looks. So I think Kenton's going to have to pressure her a little bit more when she touches the ball in midfield so she doesn't get to run up and get past defenders. Jordan taking a hard one off the chest, trying to stay with it. The Wildcats send this one back into – Allen East defense, number 15, Ashley Hawk sends that one up. Let's take a look at the rest of the starters for the Mustangs. Number 14, Sierra Studer. As we mentioned, number 15, Ashley Hawk. Number 17, Jade Hudiman. And number 20, Dylan Miller. So here again, you see her. Look at all the space that she has. She's able to carry the ball forward, and now all of a sudden it's four on four. What a great feed. And we're going to have a penalty. Looks like offsides is going to be the call. As Allen East was trying to get another run. Ryland Jones with a good feed. But it, I believe they called that one out wide on Riley Jordan. Yeah, Aubrey Young out there as well. Jones just a little bit 
slow on the pass. It was really close, but the referee right on it did a really nice job staying in position there. Alan East right now doing a great job controlling the midfield. Here comes another feed through that back line. Back to the middle. You see Ryland Jones doing a nice job working around with the left foot. That one's going to be off a wildcat and an easy save for the keeper. And that time a good job by Kenton staying in front of Jones and not letting her get around the defense. And they had another defender right behind the one that was marking her. So good defense inside the box from Kenton. Randy so Keeler and Sam Shawarmakanda, the two referees today. Getting things going. I think they're going to do both games. So long night for those two, especially Randy Keeler. I can give him a... a a little bit of a hard time. That's my old boss, just retired from Bluffton University, and he tells me he has old knees, but then he comes out and he referees <laughs> two, three, four games in a row. So Kent with an opportunity there on the throw in, but Alan East quickly takes the ball away, moves it back up. Nice job by Miller. Wins the one-on-one -on -one off her chest. Going to work through it's a little bit of traffic and has that one poked away. Good defense by the Wildcats. And that's going to lead to a throw-in for the Mustangs. The Wildcats are covered nicely there, but right now they're not doing the greatest job breaking down and staying with their man. They're kind of overcommitting and coming up, trying to get the ball away. And Alanis is able to get the ball around them and get behind. So if they want to prevent the defense or the offense, excuse me, from getting in behind, they're going to want to break down. It's almost like basketball defense, right? You're sliding your feet. You're making sure uh, you're playing your man, not letting them get around you, rather than trying to steal the ball. Rylan Jones with the quick throw in to Riley Jordan. She's working one-on-one, -on -one, gets it back out to Jones. Alan East trying to set up, trying to work back to the center. Miller has this one poked away. And I believe we're going to have a corner kick, and we are. As Rylan Jones goes out, she'll take the corner kick for Alan East. Jones, as we said earlier, 18 assists last year to go along with her team leading 31 goals. I asked you before the match, is there anything Ryland can't do? She plays basketball at a high level, great athlete in track as well. This one off the keeper, headed out by Miller. Jordan tries to get it. Kenton able to poke this one away. Goes right back up top. Number seven, Megan Kohling are able to gather that one in. Here comes Jordan one-on-one, -on -one, going to try to center it. And a nice job of playing defense that time by number two, Addy Hoddenshield. And the keeper able to get her hands on it, sends it back up across midfield. Good job by Haldenshield, but I'm really impressed by Allen East and the way they're playing these diagonal balls in through the defense and getting on the end. They're making uh, or causing a lot of trouble inside the box for Kenton. And like you said earlier, eventually they're going to capitalize if Kenton allows them that much space inside the box. Ryland Jones controls. The and again, She's going to work through the defense one-on-one. -on -one. She's got a step, going to send this to the corner and just off of the goal post. She did not miss that one by much, had the angle, but couldn't get it in the net. And that's another example of the defense overcommitting, trying to take the ball away from her. And as soon as you miss, when you swing that leg through, she goes right around you because you're off balance. And again, shot doesn't go, but you see how close she is getting. Eventually, they're going to find the back of the net. So one more time, Ryland with the balls. She's going to move through. That was much better that time. That time they held their ground, made sure that they were ready, but a good feed to Miller. Dylan centers it, and the keeper comes out, able to gather it up. Nice run on the back post by Aubrey Young. Her defender kind of fell asleep, didn't stay with her. Young ran back post, but a good job by Steyer, the goalkeeper, coming out and taking that pass away before it got to that back post. So this is, I think, an, another issue that Ken's going to have to work on. As you see, the keeper, she has a good leg on her, and she sends it back. <clears throat> but everywhere that she goes, it's one Kenton and four Allen East players, so they're not getting an opportunity to get anything going on offense. They're going to have to figure out a way to hopefully get those numbers to match up a little bit better. Yeah, and really, when they get the ball on the defensive end, the space in the field is right in the middle. So instead of trying to send that ball super deep, they might want to consider going to the middle, getting some possession in the middle of the field, and then building up and sending some diagonal balls wide perhaps. But I think that they're going to get the most good possession in the center of the field rather than trying to boot it into the final third. The Wildcats with the throw in, trying to get something going on their offensive side, but Alan East able to take this away. This one gets sent long. No Wildcats in the area as Alan East gathers it back up. That's good control right there from Ashley Hawk. She had 
Kyla Bostater bearing down, but she's able to keep her composure and just knock that away. Now another overcommitment. And you're seeing a lot of great touches for Alan East. The, the ball is ending up right at their feet. Not a lot of bounce or rebound out of it. They're staying in front of it. Lots of good touches as we have our first substitution coming into the game as Dylan Miller will take a seat. Number 22, Amaya Binkley coming in for the Mustangs. Also a substitution for the Wildcats. Number 13, Erica Biederman coming into the game. You see number 18, Trinity Tracy will take a break. Another throw in, Alanise quickly gathers it up. Alanis doing a tremendous job controlling the midfield, trying to do what they want with the soccer ball. As you see number six, Riley Jordan, moves it into Rylan Jones. Great footwork by Jones. She feeds on that back line. They have a run. Alanis back towards the center. Mm. Great move. The keeper comes out. Great instincts as Alan East had another opportunity, but the Kenton keeper right there for the save. Tremendous job by Steyer right there, making up her mind right away. No in-between, no second-guessing, just went straight for the ball. And when she dove, she was parallel with the ground, which makes you nice and wide, and she's able to knock that ball away. That's really good technique from the junior goalkeeper, Ruby Steyer. You see, Steyer has not panicked back there. She's faced a, a lot of pressure here in the early going, but she's so far been able to stand up to it. To be honest with you, as a keeper, as a former keeper, these are my favorite games. I want the ball in the box, and I want to be active. I want to be making saves. Obviously, I don't want any easy shots against me, but uh, I, I enjoy as a keeper when a team is spending a lot of time in the box, and I'm active, I'm on my toes, and I'm working hard. Here's Jones one more time. Almost was able to get around the defense but of uh, Reese McKinnis, uh, but Reese sends this one out. Going to result in another corner kick for Alan East. They've already had one here today. They're going to go to the opposite side of the field as Jordan will look to send, or excuse me, Jones is going to look to send one into the box. Right now, four players for Alan East inside the box. They've got one lurking kind of up top around uh, 35 yards out. Ryland Jones measures her kick, and she sends it. Into some traffic, punched out of there by Steyer. Another good job by Steyer. Instead of just tapping that ball into the middle, she knocked it nice and high up in the air. Wildcats playing good defense here in the early going. Have, a, have had a couple of lucky breaks, but the score still remains tied at zero. Kenton looking for a they're really their first um, long offensive possession here of the game. They've had it down in their end a couple of times, but haven't been able to really have any sort of extended possessions and looking pretty good right now. Nice drop off as Emma Hagendobler. And this one ends up going out and it's gonna stay with the Wildcats on the throw in. And starting to move the ball forward a little bit, maybe generating a chance here. I'd like to see this ball go into the box, but they don't have anyone lurking, so they'll send it to Bo Stater. There it goes. Feeds it to the center. Unfortunately, none of her teammates were in the area as Alan East is going to send this one out. and They'll have another throw in for the Wildcats. I'll tell you what, though, that's the right move from Bo Stater, just sending it into the box. A lot of times, if you can send the ball in there and just wreak some havoc, you see players kind of stabbing at it, you see some toes hit it, you see some shins. If you get the ball in front of the goal, you're dangerous. So I really like what they did there, just sending it inside. Obviously, you want some offensive help there, but for a team that hasn't had much going their way, that's a really good play. Kick off the side of the foot by the Mustangs, lends this one out. So another opportunity on the throw in. And this one is going to go back to the Mustangs as you see Dylan Miller checking back into the game for Allen East. And the throw in immediately comes to Miller. She's going to send it back up to the midfield with the official right there saying out of bounds prior to the kick. So they'll move the ball back up and the throw in will go to the Wildcats. A little bit blocked from our vantage point there with the uh, with the bench. But Kenton able to get that one in as Miller quickly moves that up. Kenton with a nice job cutting that one off, keeping it at their feet. Mustangs with a good touch, another feed. Miller trying to get her back up around to Jones. That one was a little bit off target. And now Kenton with an opportunity. We're going to race to the ball. 
And this one is going to go back out. And I believe it was going to – I thought it was going to be a corner kick. I thought the Mustangs touched that one last as it looked like Ashley Hawk was right there. But it's going to end up being a goal kick. Last touch by the Wildcats. Ken's got to be happy, though, with the last few minutes here. They're able to get the ball into that final third and finally spend some time on offense. It's been all Allen East basically for the first 13, 14 minutes. But Kenton finally getting their footing, finally looking a little bit dangerous here. Good ball. Now here's Kenton going to look to center it. That one's not quite enough on it as Hawk was right there to put the pressure on. So the Allen East keeper, Madison Jackson, able to gather it up, send it back up around midfield. A race for the ball. This was a nice job playing it off the header. See Riley Jordan down there on the two-on-one. Did a nice job keep, keeping her composure over there. That one got sent out of bounds by the Wildcats. Mustangs getting set up for the throw in. Felt like early going every time we saw Alan East with the ball, we were calling Ryland Jones' name. Kenton's done a nice job making some adjustments and kind of neutralizing her, her over the last 10 minutes or so. Here's Jordan working towards the center. Trying to work around, looks for an angle, kicks it out wide, left foot. That one's going to go behind the net. Kind of a goal kick for the Wildcats. Good build up there from Allen East, though, and you can see why Aubrey Young is such a force over there. Or is that Riley Jordan? Sorry, pretty far up here. It is young indeed. So, yeah, young, 22 goals, 14 assists last year. And you can see why her numbers are so high. She's just very good at keeping that ball at her feet, not getting too flustered, creating for herself and for her teammates. Here's Jones looking for the one-on-one. -on -one. Goes with the right foot. Puts the brakes on. Looking for an opening. Nice pressure put on by the Wildcats as they send it back out. Seems like Ken's being a lot more aggressive than they were. They seemed a little timid there in the early going, really letting Allen East dictate the pace and the possession. But here in the last part, or probably about the last like 10, 15 minutes or so, I would say they've done a much better job of, of getting after Allen East, not letting them dictate what they want to do, putting the pressure on. And I think we've seen <clears throat> the effects of that as Allen East hasn't had nearly as many openings. Yeah, really good observation because, as we said earlier, there was a lot of space in midfield for Jones to just kind of dribble up and get b behind the defense. But now they're putting a little more pressure on her. So as soon as she touches it, there's a player in her face and she can't build up that speed and she can't break free. Sierra Studer moves, kicks it up ahead. Kenton able to get it on, send it out. Allen East will have the throw in. Going to have a, another substitution as number 10, Layla Diaz Roland coming into the game. See Aubrey Young will take a seat. See Jordan that got her foot on that one, but Kenton right there to send it back up around midfield. And again, for Kenton, losing so many seniors and so much production from last year, this is a game that, you know, it's going to take a little bit possibly to get their feet under them, to start playing together at a, at a co as a cohesive unit, excuse me. And I think we're starting to see some of that. I think we're seeing them kind of settle in a little bit. We've seen the ball in that final third uh, a little more often here in the last 10 minutes, which is good for a young team like this. Trying to send it back up to the center. As that one's going to go back out of bounds. Kenton will have the throw in. Hagen Dobler will send it in. One of three captains on this Kenton team. Out Addy Hoddenshield, the other one, along with Kinsey Spring. Chloe Hattery really fighting in that midfield, trying to get that one. A lot of contact, physicality happening as Kenton now. Sensing that they have an opportunity as they have the ball down in their offensive side of things. Hawk with some good hustle gets down to that one. She's going to work along that near sideline, gets deflected. As Hattery tried to work it back outside, ends up in the favor of the Wildcats, but not able to take advantage as Biederman had it at her feet but couldn't get it to go. And the Allen East Mustang defense, I think, got away with one there as it looked like Kenton was going to get a, a fortunate bounce. 
Yeah, that's a good job by Madison Jackson, the first year starting goalkeeper for this Mustangs team coming out. We talked about it at the other end. She came out and really didn't second guess herself. She made up her mind. She's going to come out and she's going to challenge, and she was able to knock that initial shot away. And then good job recovering by the Alanis defense to send the second shot sailing back into the midfield. 2018 left to go here in the first half, still tied at zero. After a fast start, Allen East struggling a little bit to get things going offensively as Kenton has done a nice job adjusting on the defensive side of things and looking to give themselves an opportunity on offense. Yeah, we've definitely seen that momentum shift. You talk about sometimes in soccer, you talk about the field tilting, just like in hockey, the ice is tilted one way or another. And I'd say it's definitely starting to tilt a little bit in Kenton's favor. And if you're Alan East, too, you're thinking about those early opportunities that just missed well, one shot high, one shot wide right, and then one right off the post by Ryland Jones. As Alan East now with another opportunity, looking to cash in, working through the center. Another great save by Steyer. Yeah, Ruby Steyer has been phenomenal. I'm really impressed with the work that she's put in. You can tell that she's worked really hard at her craft. Her technique has been great, whether it's coming out and challenging, whether it's diving one way or another. She always seems to be in the right position, always seems to be on her toes. She's done a really nice job here keeping the score 0-0. Zero, zero. Miller plays the ball at her feet, gets it back up. As Riley Jordan sends it back over to her, Miller races for it, fights one-on-one. -on -one. And Kenton sends it back up. Nice touch. Great touch that time by Biederman. It was going to be a foot race. Nice recognition by the goalie, Madison Jackson, to come out with another opportunity. And Kenton can't cash that one in. Jackson comes out. Would have been offside anyway, I'm sure. If she would have made a play on that ball, she was about 10 yards offside, still getting back. Referee let play continue because the goalkeeper grabbed it, but whistle was definitely in his mouth, ready to call if he had to. Ryland Jones works around the defense. We saw her able to split that defense multiple times, but as you had mentioned, you know, they were over committing there early, and it looks like, you know, the adjustments that you thought they needed to make, they definitely have. Yeah, they certainly have. This one's going to go out. Going to go back to the Wildcats on the throw in on the far side. Under 18 left to go here in the first half. And Kenton getting back down on offense, looking to see if they can't get one back towards the goal. And then a bad throw in that time. It's going to go right back to the Mustangs. Yeah, that was a tough one. Not quite to the foot, so really hard to control there for Chloe Hattery. Goes out. But again, better pressure in midfield for Kenton, and they've almost won a couple possessions back right there. Now they will. Well, and you wonder, too, you know, you mentioned how, how young and how many fresh faces this Kenton Wildcat team had. And, you know, you can scrimmage and you can practice and you can do a lot of things, but there's nothing like coming out and playing an actual game. So coming out, it's not, it wasn't a surprise to see them a little timid as that one Looks like it's going to go to a corner kick. It'll be the first corner kick of the game for the Wildcats. As it can't quite see the number on who's going to take that. Is it going to be Bo Stater? Yep, Bo Stater over there. And looks like Kenton's going to put a few more in the box than Allen East has on most of their corner attempts. They've got five in the box and one right on the edge at the 10-yard line if you're looking at the football numbers, but 20 yards out from the goal. Bo Stater sends it to the center. Nice. Was trying to find somebody across to just a little bit high. This one's going to go out of bounds on the far side and going to go back to the Mustangs. Yeah, she could perhaps keep that a little lower, but I really like the pace on that ball. Made it really tough on the defense. And if someone was crashing that back post, certainly would have had a good opportunity. So a good take right there from Bo Statter. Alan East moves it back towards their side of the field. Trying to get something going offensively. Nice footwork to work through the defense. See Jordan feeds it over to Miller. Miller on the near side. Send it has, now. Has the one-on-one, -on -one, goes back, tries to go back to the center. Had it deflected. She had Jones in behind the defense, but just took an extra step with the ball. That time a rare miss by Ryland Jones as Jordan had moved it up to her. and Ryland tried to grab that ball and put it back at her feet, but wasn't able to get it. 
Alan e still on the offensive. Trying to put some pressure on this Wildcat defense. I'm going to have a whistle. This one's going to go against the Mustangs. Josie Schwemmer and Trinity Tracy ready to check in for Kenton. Just over 15 minutes to play here. And I'll tell you what, if you watch the first couple minutes, it's probably surprising. Or if that's all you watched, it's probably surprising. The score still 0-0. Zero, zero. All Allen East at first. Kenton with a couple, we'll call them half chances here lately, but no one able to get the ball in the back of the net just yet. Fight near the midfield. Kenton sends this one back down. Jackson's going to run over, gather this one up. One thing we haven't seen much of from Kenton, even though they're getting some decent looks inside the box, they haven't spent a whole lot of time possessing in midfield, even when they get a little bit of time, like right here, good job by Hagen Dobler, just kind of controlling the ball, but even then forcing a pass. I think they need to just control a little bit more and let things open up as the defense comes out and tries to get the ball back. Allen East with an opportunity, sends this one towards the net as you see Steyer just get her hand on that one. Allen East with another missed opportunity. Yeah, really nice save right there. And on that far side, Aubrey Young wanted a foul, but when you get a shot off like that, they usually just rule advantage. Jones tries to send it back into the box, and so that one's a little bit high for Young. And it is going to go out, going back to the Wildcats. So as you mentioned, a couple of substitutions for Kenton, Trinity Tracy, Josie Swimmer. They are coming into the game. As we do the substitutions, we'll take a break and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Taking a look at the Kenton Moose scoreboard. 13.30 left to go here in the first half. We are still tied at zero, but Allen East looking to put some pressure. Mm. As you see Young send that one just a little bit high and wide as they are back to having opportunities, just not able to cash in. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that was a shot or a pass, but it looked like if it was a shot and it was on goal, that might have gone right over top of Steyer. So I wonder if that's something Allen East will look for later on if they get a look at a, a longer shot, if they try to play it over the top of the goalkeeper because she's done such a nice job. Anything that she can get to, she has so far. Nice job by Kohlinger. As Kenton. Back with the balls. Bo Statter sends it back over. As this one just a little bit off target. Young tries to feed it up to Jones. Jones ends up with it off of the deflection. She's going to send it right at Steyer who gathers it in. Good position there by Steyer. I think Jones, well, I think it's pretty obvious, but definitely wanted to get that a little bit further to the left. But either way, again, nice job by Allen East. Registering another chance and another shot on goal. Unofficially, that's six for them. Hattery sends that one up. Allen East uh, able to gather it in. Hattery works right around that midfield, tries to take it back. This one gets sent out. Wildcats will have the throw in with 12 minutes left to go here in the first half. As Kenton trying to get that momentum back. You know, we started mentioning a little bit earlier before uh, we had the corner kick just about the fresh faces of Kenton. And, you know, I, I think that probably really played into that little bit of that slow start that we saw. You, you can't replicate game speed and, and game conditions. And, and, you know, I think you could see that Kenton was just a little bit timid. You know, they were still trying to figure some things out. But it definitely seems that everybody out there is getting more and more comfortable here as this first half comes to a close. And, you know, you wonder sometimes, you know, if you're Allen East coming into this game, you know, knowing that you had the experience on your side, felt like you could probably put some goals up, especially early. 
But when you can't, Kenton's hanging around. They're getting opportunities. You know, and Kenton just looking to take advantage of one of those. And if you're Allen East, you got to find ways of cashing in on these good looks that they've had. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think the longer that Kenton keeps the ball out of the back of the net, the more confidence they're going to get. Right. I mean, it's still 0-0, but you were on your heels and it looked like you were going to be down 1-2, maybe 3 nothing early on, but you're still in this game and one goal for you could definitely change the entire course of the game and all the momentum. But still a lot of work to do as Alan East putting a ton of pressure on them still. Hogan Dobler had the whistle a little bit ago that gave it back to Alan East. As this one's going to travel to the far side. Kenton able to keep this one inbound, sends it back towards the center, but Ashley Hawk sends it back over midfield. Here's Young, goes back into the middle. And you see Riley Jordan now moving up. Good defense there. Jessica Wood taking it away. Jordan trying to hustle to get to that ball, but it's going to travel out of bounds and back to Kenton. Jessica Wood on the throw in for Kenton. Going to send it over to Bostatter. Looking to get it back towards the middle of the field. A lot of blue shirts over there, though, as Ashley Hawk able to gather it in. She's going to send it out. Nice clear right there, and possibly a chance for Allen East to go. Ryland Jones has good position. Jones uses that speed to get behind the back line, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And oh what my. a save by Ruby Steyer. She had Ryland Jones coming with a full head of steam right at her, and she stood tall to get the save. Goodness gracious, what a great job by Steyer. Made herself as big as possible, knocked that away from Jones. I think next time if Jones gets that one-on-one, -on -one, she's going to want to shoot that a little bit earlier because the closer you get to Steyer, the harder it is to score against her because of that great te technique. Ball did go out of bounds off of the save, so Allen East is going to get the corner kick. Ryland Jones back to take it. This will be their fourth of the half. Still four in the box, four of the Mustangs, two in the middle, one on the front post, one on the back. That's where it goes. Young got a foot on it, heads it back towards the center. Allen East has not done a great job on those corner kicks as very rarely have they been able to get anybody to even get a piece of that ball as it comes through the center. Bostad are fighting for it along that near sideline, gets sent up, and this one is going to go out and it'll be a goal kick for the Wildcats. Yeah, and Jones was offside, so she didn't even try to play that ball. She knew she would have been called for it. So just let it go past her. It'll be a goal kick, a couple substitutions here. I'll tell you what, Ryland Jones looks a little bit gassed right now, right? Opening night, pretty hot out here, playing on turf, so it's a little extra warm, and I don't well, think she's been out of the game yet. No, and well, with that last run, you saw the energy she expended, too. She turned it on. She th knew she had that out opening. She wanted to make sure that she got um, – she shook free and had a uh, wide-open look at it. And You know, after so many misses, too, it starts playing with you. She's had, you know, a couple of great looks at it, sent it high, sent it wide, had one go off the post. She's sent two right at Steyer as well, and then they had that one-on-one. -on -one. So at a certain point, too, the mental factor of it starts wearing you down. You start getting frustrated because you know that you should be putting these in the net. She's having a coach right now. He's trying to coach her up a little bit on one-on-ones and telling her to maybe fake one direction to get the keeper to go. I would imagine, based on how Alanis plays, she's going to have another opportunity or two like that. So we'll see what happens. Here she goes again. Young sends it up. Jones tracks it down. Plays it off the right foot back towards the center. And this one's going to go off the post, out of bounds. That's a tough one. Really dangerous right there is Steyer. Like most people expected that ball to go to her right. And instead it went to her left. And she didn't have much time to react. So she just stuck a foot out and sent it out of bounds. Again, Great reaction from Steyer, who's in the right spot. She has done such a fantastic job. And it looked from my angle, I thought that had gone off the post and out. Steyer must have helped deflect that. As yeah, it went right off her leg, actually right next to the post. I can see from your angle how that would be a tough one. So Jones, not much on that corner kick this time. As I think you're right. She looks tired. And not sure what happened there as... It looked like she was sending it, but not a lot of action from anybody, so not sure if she kicked early or, or what, but Jones will get another opportunity here at the corner. 
Jones sends it into the box. This one's high and long again, gonna go out of bounds and another missed opportunity off of the corner. Six minutes left to go here in the opening half, still tied at zero. Allen East and Kenton opening the 2023 girls soccer season here on Friday Night Football. Or football. Yeah, it's yeah you know, you gotta, 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 gotta get the right <laughs> pronunciation. Jones gets this one, plays it at her feet, looks to put it into the box, drops it off quick or to Miller as Miller got it back to Jones, who then sent it long. Young able to track it down. Uh-oh. Right back to the middle. As you see, Riley Jordan, she sends this one out of bounds. Yeah, just a few minutes ago we talked about Alan East maybe taking a few more shots from deep, trying to send it over the top of Steyer, and that one certainly was high as it went over the bar, but a, a good attempt right there. Steyer with the goal kick, going to be played by Jordan. Riley Jordan works one-on-one, -on -one, tries to get it down to Jones, has it taken away. Unfortunate bounce for the Wildcats as Jones is able to gather that one back in. Gets it over to Miller. Miller going to look to send it back into the box if she can get a little bit of space, but great defense that time by um, Addy Hoddenshield. Able to prevent that pass from going in. Yeah, it's a good job by Hoddenshield. Staying with her man, not over committing. We talked about that earlier as well. Ken early on just kind of being too aggressive and missing as they try to take the ball away from their opponent. And as soon as they miss, they've, the Mustangs have gotten in behind them. So a really nice job there, staying in front and not letting that ball get past her. So this one's going to go long, goes out on that far sideline. It'll stay with Kenton as they'll have the throw in. And definitely looks like fatigue setting in for this Mustang offense. As balls that they were having much better touches on and able to drop at their feet. Now they're getting those big deflections. They're, they're going long. They're not quite able to control it like they were in the early going. See, this is the time where you just want to possess for a little bit. You've got three minutes and 45 seconds left and had a little bit of space to operate, but instead of being patient, they try to force a pass over the top and the Mustang's just able to knock it away and ultimately off of Kenton and another possession back for the Mustangs. Now Jones will take a seat. Three yeah. and a half to go. You see Ryland taking some big breaths there. She needs a, a break here in the last 3.30 as number 22, Maya Binkley, comes into the game. Collinger drops that off to Hawk, who sends it back up. The Kenton defense right there. They're going to play it back to the keeper. As Steyer will move it back up around midfield. You can tell not quite as much movement from either team here. Yeah, I was just I think <laughs> we're both getting a little bit tired on the first night. Like you mentioned, uh, you know, it's it's. I mean, for August 11th, it is not as warm as what it you know typically might be, but still a, a warm night, playing down on the turf, and that adrenaline starting to wear off here as you That's reach right. the end of the first half. And I think you're seeing it out of both teams right now. Yeah, no question. I think both will be really happy in two and a half minutes when that whistle blows or that horn horn goes off, and they get to chill out for a little bit. Unchilled plays it back towards the middle. But this is also the time where you can see uh, a player perhaps who is tired take a step the wrong way and, and get blown by and a, an easy goal or a cheap goal happens. So we'll have to see now an injured player down. Riley Jordan took a hard hit to the face as she went over to play that. And we are going to have a stoppage here. They're going to come and check on her. So we'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. The Kenton Moose, 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Tonight's goal sponsors are R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project from your home or business. Good luck to all the area athletes, and go Mustangs. So Riley Jordan getting checked out on the bench. 
She was able to get up and leave under her own power. As Allen East has the throw in with two minutes left to go here in the half. Kenton sends it into the middle. Trying to outrun was Biederman, but not able to get to it. As Madison Jackson able to gather that one in. Jackson hasn't really gotten to do a whole lot back there, so I'm sure she was happy to get her hands on the ball and get to send it to midfield. Yeah, outside of really one opportunity, you know, Kenton hasn't had a lot of shots going towards gold, and Jackson hasn't been overly busy. On the other side, though, Ruby Steyer has had a tremendous half as we have a whistle against the Mustangs. Yeah, not, not a ton of contact right there, but it was enough that it would have given Allen East a, a slight advantage and possibly a goal, so the referee had to blow the whistle. They've done a nice job tonight. Not too much that they've had to call, but every time it seems like there should be a call, the whistle has blown. It's good, good crew so far. Schaefer tracks that one down, but not able to keep it inbounds. Throw in for Kenton. Under a minute left to go here in the half. Kenton trying to go quickly. Nice defense on the far side by Schaefer. Here comes Allen East, 35 seconds left to go. Young, possibly the last run here of the half. Tries to go towards the center, but tremendous defense. But there is going to be a whistle. That looked pretty clean. But we got a whistle. And I think... It's was she in the box? No, she's no, just, she's just outside. outside. It's going to be she? a free kick from a dangerous spot, though. And uh, I'm actually right there with you. That looked that pretty looked close. Pretty but, good. but referee right on top of it, like we said. They've done a – oh, I see. So it was a foul before the ball being dispossessed. He played advantage, and then once it was taken away, he called a foul that was about 10 yards away. So just playing advantage right there. I, I didn't see the foul, but that's mm -hmm. what happened. And that is going to bring the first half to a close, though, as Allen East not able to get the kickoff before it comes to a close. And after a fast start and some pretty good opportunities, Allen East not able to cash in. The Kent defense stands tall, and we go to halftime. We return. The second half will be underway. You're watching girls soccer on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's goal sponsors are Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose in Hardin County is home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. Welcome back to Allen East High School, where the Kenton Wildcats and Allen East Mustangs have the 2023 girls soccer season underway. And the first half, even though it's a 0-0 score, lots of opportunities, lots of actions, especially from the Mustangs, as you see Aubrey Young getting right after it here to open up the second. Yeah, I really like the aggression, though, right there from Addie Hoddenshield. That's not really something we saw a whole lot from Kenton in the first half is that aggression in the midfield and not letting Allen East run around. We'll have to see how Kenton adjusts. I think uh, the, the thing that's gotten them or caught them off guard is that diagonal ball in behind the defense. And so, you know, those backside defenders are going to have to stay awake. That You might have to see Ruby Steyer come out a little bit further and, and try to take those passes away when they do get in behind. So we'll see what happens happens but again like you said it's 0-0 but we've had spurts where it's all Allen East and we've had a couple small spurts where it's uh, all Kenton so first time head coach for Kenton and uh, a lot of young players look at that early shot. shot coming in this one from I believe that's Ryland Jones yep on the far side can't get that one to go in and you talked about Ruby Steyer and some of the things that she may have to do here in the second half but how about that first half from Ruby? Ruby played so well. She's just a technically gifted goalkeeper. She is always in the right spot. She does a nice job coming off the line. And oof, just and like that. Ryland Jones with a tremendous shot from distance just out of the reach of Steyer. And we talked about it in the first half. 
Rylan Jones wasn't going to continue to miss. She eventually was going to cash in if she kept getting shots. That time there even wasn't a lot of space. It was pretty good defense by the Wildcats. But Rylan so talented, moving it with her foot, able to get that one to go in. Yeah, and even then, Steyer in the right spot, but that shot had so much pace on it, she put her hands up and couldn't quite get enough muscle to knock the ball away. So really nice shot by Jones, and we finally have someone on the board, and now the referees look like they want to have a quick chat about something. Only a minute 37 off of the clock here in the second before, before um, Ryland Jones was able to cash in the first Jones ex RD Jones excavating goal of the game as the Allen East Mustangs are on top, one to nothing. As the officials are taking some time here to talk, not sure if we have a clock issue. And we do as it looks like they're going to add some time. I think they're going to subtract. It sounded like he said 37 on the clock. We'll see what they end up doing. Yeah, it was 38, 37. Yeah, so they needed okay. to add, add about 14 seconds there. So even less time came off before they were able to put in that Jones excavating goal. But either way, the goal is good. Allen East on top as Ryland Jones, as we saw, she really looked fatigued there towards the end of the second. They had to pull her out with about 3.30 left to go in the first half. But that break must have been all she needed as she put one in here immediately in the second. Post at her, kicks it back as Kenton now going to get an opportunity to answer. Jones takes that one again. right away as Aubrey Young and Ryland Jones trying to play a two-person game that time. Kenton able to take it back. Good job by Hodden Shield right there. She was working the ball forward. She noticed she didn't have anything, so she stopped. In the first half, we saw Kenton kind of force into the defense, but that time she stopped. She sent a pass backward to allow Kenton to get a little more space and now a decent amount of buildup as they get out wide, but unfortunately that pass goes out. Allen East with the throw in, gets it up to Jones. Jones works along the far sideline. Nice footwork to keep that one from going out of bounds and to control the possession. Great patience from Jones right there. She had two defenders on her, so just turned around, slowly worked her way back, and made a little outlet pass. Allen East trying to control around midfield. Kenton able to get a foot on it. Not able to control at that time was Aubrey Young as that one's going to go out, throw in back to Kenton. Yeah, Young, another player that played a lot of minutes in the first half. And, you know, you talked about the fatigue at the end of the half and how those legs start to get heavy, those touches start to get heavy. And right there, she's not able to get that leg up uh, high enough to control that ball, and it goes out. We'll see how the fatigue plays into this game here later on. Kenton playing nice defense around midfield. That one just out of the reach of Hattery. Allen East sends it up. Here's Young on the run. Does a great job coming from the backside. One-on-one -on -one against Steyer. Just going to be over the outreach foot of Ruby Steyer as Allen East now on top. Two to nothing. Another R.D. Jones excavating goal for the Mustangs. And they're on top. Two to nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard sponsor the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose in Hardin County is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton, online at kentonmoose428.com. And we take a look at the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Allen East on top, 2-0, to nil, as they have come out firing here in the second half, able to cash in two early opportunities as Aubrey Young and Ryland Jones have gotten the scoring underway for the Mustangs. Yeah, and a good job that time by Aubrey Young. Nice, calm finish. And look, Ruby Steyer came out of the goal. She did exactly what she was supposed to do. She did exactly what she did in the first half. She made herself big, but it was just a really good, calm, composed finish by Aubrey Young. Steyer shouldn't be too disappointed with that one. Obviously, as a keeper, you never want the ball to go into the goal. But she did everything she could have done. Aubrey Young just with a fantastic finish. She's a senior. You can tell that she knows how to score goals. 22 last year, and now her first of the season here tonight. And like you said, Ruby Steyer did what she was supposed to do. She made Aubrey Young make a decision. Aubrey Young just made the right one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I've just been so impressed by Steyer back there and, and everything she's been able to do here in this game. Allen, he's finally breaking through, definitely looking like the better team, the more experienced team right now. Uh, but Kenton has to be happy with that first half. And you still have plenty of time, 35 minutes and some change here to uh, maybe get something on the board, but uh, really start to just gel. We start to play together, start to feel good. You know, there I, I found out at halftime, Kenton is actually missing a couple players that would normally start for them here tonight too. Uh, one of which is at a Morgan Wallen concert, believe it or not, which, hey, I, I don't know if I, I like Morgan Wallen. I think Absol I might have to miss a soccer game for that absolutely. too. But uh, either way, you know, Ken Kenton's got to be pretty happy so far. And, uh, we'll see how they fare the rest of this match. Well, we knew that Allen East was going to have the speed. We, you know, they're, they're very athletic. They're very fast, um, especially coming out of Young and Jones. And in that first half, we saw flashes of that, and they were able to get behind that Kenton defense, just couldn't pay it off. But then they fatigued, and Kenton was able to stay with them, and those opportunities weren't quite there. But after halftime, looks like Allen East got their second win. We've seen them use that speed um, to their benefit as a handball is going to get called that time by um, on the Mustangs. I believe that was going to be on number nine, Rowan Schaefer. Bostadter nice sends ball. that one in. Yeah, no one there on the back side to get to it, but a nice job by Bostadter getting that ball up in the air. And now a ball toward goal. And we talked about it in the first half, but Madison Jackson, the first year starting goalkeeper for this Mustangs team, didn't have a whole lot to do in that first half. So anytime she can get her paws on the ball, I'm sure she gets excited. Young gathers that one in, able to keep it momentarily from going out. As Kenton does send it out, throw one will go to the Mustangs. Young quickly into Jones. Ryland plays it at her feet. Moves around with the right foot, goes through some contact, and that aggressive play is really paying off for Kenton. She didn't really have any teammates moving around trying to get open for her to release that ball. Kind of a frustrating thing for Jones, I'm sure, is she had two defenders on her back and she was looking for a pass and everyone around her just kind of standing around. So uh, those Mustangs definitely need to move around and make sure they're making themselves available for uh, anyone that might be in trouble. Bostadter was whistled for the handball that time, so free kick for the Mustangs. Riley Jordan. Tries to feed Jones, it gets deflected. Jones still able to gather it in. She moves around to the right, sends it towards the center. Nobody on the run as Ruby Steyer able to gather that one in. Good idea from Jones there. Not really anywhere else to go with the ball. And we've seen multiple times that Allen East offense able to get behind the defense on a diagonal ball played through. So she thought might as well try it, see if I have any teammates at the end of it. Didn't that time, but that's about all, or that was about the only option that she had in that situation. Colling and working along that far sideline. She brings it up, tries to drop it off to Jones. This one gets poked out of bounds by the Wildcats. Kenton trying to get something going. Fighting tough on that far sideline. Another throw in, last touched by the Mustangs. And this is where it can get really, really tough for a team that's trailing, or really even a team that's winning, right? A game where uh, you've got a little bit of a lead, it's hot, it's early, uh, you, you're probably not in peak physical condition here at the beginning of the season. And so you, know, it's, you start to wear down a little bit. You've played you know, 48 minutes so far tonight on a hot night on the turf. And so both these teams, it, it'll just be interesting to see how they play and, and how their legs hold up. Maybe a chance here on the outside. You saw on that time, Arbor Young calling for it. Had the oh. run, and this one's going to get poked in. Riley Jordan, as she fed Young on that on, from the middle out to the outside. And it looked like maybe a little bit of a misplay, but Riley Jordan puts it in, and she gets the third goal of the game for the Mustangs. Yeah, so three different Mustangs have scored, and that time a ball that just kind of fell to her, and she swung right through it, and I think she caught Steyer off guard. It was a well-placed ball anyway. Ends up in the back of the net. So Allen East with no goals in the first half, and now three so far in the first eight minutes of change in the second half. As some of the opportunities Allen East wasn't able to cash in on that first half, they have made that adjustment and they're cashing them in now. And that time, you know, the Kenton defense did a nice job. Aubrey Young looked like she was going to have a free run on that back post. And, you know, the defense held tight, denied her, 
and then just an unfortunate break as it ended up back up with the feet of Riley Jordan, who was wide open, and made a nice kick just out of the outstretched arms of Steyer. No question whatsoever, and, and that's what you get when you have an experienced team playing up top. Young created 14 assists last year for the Allen East Mustangs, and you can see she's got speed on the outside. She's comfortable with the ball at her feet. She's got some foot skills as well. She knows how to finish, but she's a great creator for this team. Your goal sponsor is R.D. Jones excavating the third R.D. Jones excavating goal of the game for the Mustangs as they are on top 3-0 with just under 31 minutes left to go here in the second half. Allen East has made the adjustments at halftime and have come out firing here in the second. Take a shot here. Well, just out off. of the reach. and She tried to get it down there and looked like she was going to have a pretty good look at a long shot, but a little bit too much on that feet, couldn't get it to go. Yeah, and it was a really good job by the defense stepping up and knocking the ball away. Good hustle here by Steyer coming out. That was a tough call or a tough ball right there for Steyer to play too because she had one of her teammates coming down. She was coming out, but right behind her in a full head of steam was Dylan Miller. If you misplay that, Miller has a completely wide open net. So Steyer would did a nice job just putting her foot on it to send it out. No question whatsoever. But going back to the offensive end for Kenton, you saw them almost take a shot from about eh, 25, 30 yards out. I think we're going to see a couple of those. If they can get some space from that far out, they're going to have to put it on net because they really haven't registered many good chances. So it'll be interesting to see how they play offensively, but clearly some work to do defensively before they can do that. Some good, clean, aggressive play on the outside by the Wildcats to deny Jones. Another feed. Here's Jordan. Riley Jordan trying to play it at her feet. This one is going to bounce away. Kenton able to get it back. Has some traffic to work through. Here towards the near sideline. That's going to go out. Throw into the Mustangs. That was good patience there by Megan Kohlinger, a senior who had the ball at the top of the box and had some space. You think maybe she would try a shot right there, but with a 3 nothing lead and a couple of teammates in the box, instead of shooting, she tried to create a better opportunity. It didn't quite work out, but it's a really unselfish play for her because it was a really easy spot to at least unload. And, you know, you've got the excuse, well, we're up 3 nothing. might as well try it. Very unselfish play. So Hattery had to throw in for the Wildcats as they moved it a little bit upfield. Goes back out, but it'll stay with Kenton. Looks like the Kenton boys team heading over to get warmed up. Allen East boys in the left end zone. I suppose they was at the north end zone here, and they're getting warmed up. Don't forget, double header here on WOSN. Boys coming up after this one. Aubrey Young tries to play this one moving forward, but it's a little bit out of her reach. As Ashley Hawk going to reach back, get that one, send it out of bounds, let the defense come down and get set up. 28-30 left to go here in the game. Allen East on top, 3-0. to nil. Hattery throws this one up. Both sides are not able to get her foot on it. Hawk gathers it in. Ashley Hawk has been very busy throughout this entire game and a couple of really nice plays in the first half that kept the defense in check and allowed um, – Kenton to not really get much going, and she had a lot of great hustle plays, was able to put some pressure on that Kenton offense, and was a big reason why Kenton was kept off the scoreboard. Yeah, that's a really good shout, actually. We've talked a lot about this Kenton offense, especially Aubrey Young and Ryland Jones and all the work they've done up top, but you're absolutely right. This defense from Allen East, led by Ashley Hawk, has done a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, they, they play an interesting style where, they, where they, they play a little bit deeper. They kind of force the, the offense to come to them. And then it's like, uh, like a jaw, right? They just clench down, and it's really tough to get around and get anything going. That's why I think Kenton's going to need to try to find some space away from the defense and just take these long shots and try to make something happen. Yeah, if you're not forcing that defense to come out, they're going to play back. They don't want anything going behind them. They're protecting. And so far, so good for the Mustangs. Ball played out of bounds once again. Going to have a throw in for the Mustangs. Throw in comes down to Young. She's going to fight one on one down that far sideline. Looks to play it back, and it's going to get sent. Young going to try to use that speed. Saw a little bit of hesitation that time from Huddenshield, which is not something we've usually seen out of her. She's been very physical, has done a nice job against the top players for Allen East, whether it was Young or Jones or even Jordan. 
But that time, you know, we talked about the fatigue that was setting in as you saw another run come. This one's going to go out wide. Steyer able to get her hands on that one. Ooh, Steyer might be a little bit injured there. She's struggling to get back up and holding on to her knee. As she goes down, we'll see if we're going to have a stoppage. And it looks like we are as the officials are going in to check on Steyer. So as they check on her, we'll step aside and we'll be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's goal sponsor is Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. So Ruby Steyer looks to be okay. As we were kind of talking off air. See those non-contact knee grabs. It's, you get a little nervous, but maybe just a little bit of cramping as she looks like she's stretching out back there. But... Good enough to stay in the game, and we are back underway. I'm honestly surprised we haven't seen more players go down with cramps so far tonight. That'll be something we'll likely see here later on, especially in soccer where there aren't really a ton of hydration breaks, right? You don't get to, to come over to the sideline and get water very often. So hydration key in all sports, obviously, but certainly soccer where you are running for 80 minutes and 40 minutes straight. Kenton plays this one up as Allen East has been able to control the midfield for the most part or for most part of the here of this second half as we still have 25 minutes left to go. Miss kick that time as Young tries to track that one down, but Steyer's gonna get it, sends it back up. Kohlinger tried to jump up and control that one, but it's gonna go off her knee, goes out of bounds, and a throw in comes down to the Wildcats. Here's Hattery. Good pressure midfield there by Jade Hunneman. Another race for it as Aubrey Young has been very active throughout this entire game, but especially here in the second half. Yes, she has. And with Ryland Jones out of the game, we see Young kind of move more to a middle slash right side role. We saw her more on the left in the first half. Kenton plays this one forward, but there's Ashley Hawk as she has been all game. Knocks that one down, plays it up. Good defense by the Mustangs one more time. Kenton trying to get something going, but every time it looks like maybe they have a little bit going and can try to get a run, and that Mustang defense has been right there to shut it down. It's a good ball over to the corner, just out of reach though. And that was a great job by Maya Binkley that time as she recognized where she was, so she slowed down to make sure she wasn't going to be off sides, but not able to get to that pass quick enough. Yeah, and I think that exact <coughs> fact where she just had to slow down just a bit threw off the timing of that pass, but it was a really good idea there from the Mustangs. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Kenton with an opportunity, works against Madison. Madison, nice position. Even looked like she was leaning. The rebound no good. Most that are not able to get her foot on that Shoot one. It. Is it going go out of bounds? And it gathered in by Kenton before it does. Here's Bostadter one more time. Going to look to center. Kicks it towards the middle. This one's going to be a little bit wide off the side of the net. Yeah, just couldn't wrap her foot around it quite enough, but a good job there by Kenton. The first really good chance for the Wildcats here tonight, but a good job by, the, like we said, the first-year keeper, Madison Jackson, coming out and knocking that ball away. And sometimes it's, it's your presence you know, rather than making a save, just your presence that keeps that ball out of the back of the net. And right there, she just took up some space and made it tough for Kenton to do anything with the ball once they got into the box. And Erica Biederman had done a great job. She got herself free, and she even looked like she had gotten uh, Jackson leaning. But then Jackson able to make the adjustment, just get enough on it for the denial, and stayed with it as Biederman tried for the rebound. But Kenton gets turned away, and the score remains 3-0. Aubrey Young with the free kick, sends it up ahead. And for some reason, that one gets right through. Nice poke, but a missed opportunity by Riley, Riley Jordan. 
Has a misplay that time, a rare one by Addie Haudenshield. As she let that one go through, not sure if she thought Steyer was there to take it or some miscommunication, but almost led to another goal. Yeah, it was like three defenders just kind of stood there and watched the ball go through, wondering which one of them was going to go. And when you wonder if someone else is going to do it, oftentimes no one ends up doing it. Now some substitutions. Ryland Jones will come back in along with Dylan Miller and 16, that's Campbell Hawk, the freshman, who has that 18, Trinity Tracy coming in for Kenton. Twenty-one forty left to go here in the game. Allen East on top, three to nil. Ryland Jones back into the game. She has had a lot of opportunities to get some goals. Finally able to break through here in the second half. And then pulled her teammates along with her as we've seen three different Mustangs put goals into the net. Yeah, it's always good when multiple players can get on the board. Obviously, Alan East last year dominated by Ryland Jones with 31 goals, Aubrey Young with 22. But when you can get some other players on the board, that's always nice. Spread the wealth a little bit and obviously build confidence all over the pitch. Steyer with the soft touch up. As Kenton moves it back up, trying to get it going towards the midfield, but this one's going to go out. Throw-in's going to go back to Allen East. Strong throw-in over to Miller with the header. Going to try to outrace the defense. Able to get a foot on it, but nobody up ahead as that one's going to go out and the goal kick coming for Kenton. And actually, I I think the official whistled that it, it's going to stay with Alan East. So Alan East with an opportunity here for a corner kick. And, you know, we saw them struggle with a lot of things in the first half, not able to finish. We, they missed some wide open shots, things that they weren't happy with. And corner kicks were another one of those things. So the first opportunity here of the second half, we'll see if they've made that adjustment as they have with everything else. Yeah, Jones spent a lot of time sending corners to the back post in the first half. This one will be the same. Had a much better distance on at that time as Aubrey Jones was right there, but a little bit long. And she looks like she might be a little shaken up as she's going to be able to walk that one off and be okay. So we have a substitution coming into the game as Aubrey Young is going to check out. And number, does it say 20 it's 24? So yeah, it's going to be Ann Airely, the senior, coming into the game. Kind of a lull in the action here as of late outside of that corner that was a decent chance. Just Young not able to get anything behind it, sending it wide. So it'll be interesting to see both these teams moving forward. You know, we mentioned a lot of young, fresh faces for this Kenton team. Very difficult conference schedule as they have to go through the Western Buckeye League. You know, Allen East trying to build off of a strong campaign last year. Obviously want to take another step forward this year. And try to look towards the front of that NWC. See, this shot goes in. Steyer with another save. Yeah, both teams with winning records last year. Kenton 9-8-1, Allen East 11-6-1. But both teams falling in the first round of the playoffs. So like you said, both teams looking to take a step forward. This Allen East program is relatively young, so you know it's it's impressive to see them have so much success early on in their program history. And it helps they have seven returning starters this year from that team. And you, know, you when you get your keep your leading scorers and your your top assists, and you when you just watch this team, you can see that they're fast. They have another gear when they need it, and that's only going to improve as the season goes on and everybody gets into better shape and. The conditioning's a little bit stronger, and they're they're going to be fun to watch. And you know, Kenton, you know, same thing. They have a lot of new kids or a lot of new girls this year that they're going to have to rely on as they lost a lot last year. Another shot goes in, and we're going to have another R.D. Jones excavating goal, and it's Ryland Jones one more time with her second of the game. 
And she, that was a, I mean, there was not much Steyer could do as that hit the top post and then went straight down. Yeah, it's a good goal right there. Jones is second of the year on her way to trying to match or beat last year's total of 31. RD Jones excavating, serving all your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit RD Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or a business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs as they find themselves on top four to nothing. Some good footwork there in the middle by Bo Statter and her pass just a little wide of the target, but nice tough run as well as she got run into by a defender, but the defender got the brunt of the contact. You know, I think whatever the final score ends up being here today as we hit with about 17 minutes left to go, it's not really going to be indicative of the type of game that Kenton has played because especially in that first half, we, we really saw them start almost timid. I, they, they were very – they played off. They weren't, you know, playing as aggressive as you would have liked to have seen. And that's when we saw a lot of those early opportunities for Allen East that they weren't able to cash in, fortunately, for Kenton. But then they started getting aggressive as you see another run, this time for Jones with the right foot right at Steyer. She able to get, she's able to gather that one in for another save. You know, but as that first half went on, you saw they, that confidence started to build. They played a lot better. We saw them have some opportunities. And I think what we're seeing here in the second half is more of the fatigue setting in and then just the skill set of what they're playing taking over against some um, newer players. But Ken has really played, you know, you know, very well here tonight, especially in spurts, and I think they can take a lot away from this game. It's August 11th. It's early. There's a lot of teams that won't even play their first game for a couple of weeks still as they get the first one under their belt tonight. And I, I have a feeling when we see this team towards the end of the season, it's going to be night and day. Yeah, no question. And I love what you said in the first half. You said there's no substitute for game action, and that's exactly right. Right. And, and like you said, they started to look a lot better as this game went on. And, you know, they're still in spurts. They look like a team that could certainly do some damage. This one gets sent out of bounds as we see Erica Biederman. She was fighting hard on that far side. Going to have a throw in here for Kenton. They got deep into their own um, towards the offensive side of things here. Going to see if they can't put some pressure on Jackson. Some contact as Aubrey Young hits the ground and whistle's going to go in favor of the Mustangs as they'll get the free kick. With 15 minutes left, I'm curious to see if Alan East continues to try to force the ball forward, or I shouldn't say force, but push the ball forward, or if they'll kind of settle in, try to possess a little bit and see this 15 minutes through, you know, especially in a game where you're up 4-0, but those legs are, are – very tired. You wonder if you start to hold back just a little bit, but here they come down the left side. And they almost answer that question almost immediately <laughs> as Riley Jordan pushes this one up on the near sideline. As you see, Hirely try to get after that one. Hunneman and Hirely here on the near side goes up against that Wildcat defense. It gets sent out. Jones is going to come over for the throw in. Jordan trying to play that one at her feet, but good defense by the Wildcats as you saw Hogan Dobler come over and knock that one away. But no one's marking Jones when she throws it in, so that's one where you just want to send it right back to Jones and let her play a ball in. Here it is. The right foot towards the center. The Wildcat defense positioned right, though, able to get a foot on it. Yeah, good clearance and good job by Bostatter. Kenton trying to work quickly up that sideline. Nice job telegraphing that throw in by Schaefer. Onshield trying to race to get to that one. Hogan Dobler sends this one up. But Allen East defense on that back line, standing strong once again, able to get it on, get the foot on it. But here comes Kenton. Both at her. Oh. Had the opportunity. Not quite sure what was going on there as it looked like Madison Jackson. I don't know if she just thought that one was going to go wide, so she's going to grab the ball, but she was well out of position and both at her missed an opportunity. 
Yeah, it almost seemed like perhaps Bostatter was behind the defender, and so the goalkeeper Jackson couldn't see her, so she started to run over like the ball was going to come into the box and wide left. Then as soon as she saw Bostatter, the goal was wide open, but Bostatter almost put it right through the goal, the goal post. Here Look comes Jones, Jones. Ryland Jones using that speed to beat the defense. Going to send it with the left foot back up towards the center of the box. But a great job by Reese McKinnis to get her foot on that one and send it out. Ryland Jones take another corner kick. I believe this will be the seventh of the game for the Mustangs. So far, though, only one that really looked like it had an opportunity. Yeah, and she's got... Dylan Miller on the back post this time. Miller a little more height than Aubrey Young. This one gets sent into the Oof. box just out of the reach of that of Miller as she comes running in and just skimmed the top of her head. Yeah, I think she missed time that jump. I don't think the ball was too high over her head. Jones has done a really nice job placing it on that back post so far tonight, but missed time the jump and it goes out of play. Under 12 to go here in the game. Kenton with the throw in. Hattery plays that one off her shin. Got a little bit away from her as Alan East was there to gather it up. Kenton trying to get things going, but Alan East just too much here with the pressure as Miller able to get away. Looks to send it into the box. Jones was on the run, but this one's going to be wide. You can see Miller over there. She knows she missed an opportunity. Ruby Steyer setting up for the goal kick. Double header here tonight at Allen East as the Kenton girl, Kenton and Allen East girls underway, and then the Kenton Allen East boys to follow on Friday Night Football. We'll have a double header here on WOSN as we will bring you the boys game following this matchup. And a great way to get the 2023 season underway. Yeah, I love these early games. And I was actually talking to Coach Jamie Bartlett, the Kenton boys coach, at halftime. And he was saying that they're playing their first game, first regular season game today. They have a scrimmage next week because they don't play again until next Saturday. So they have an, an unofficial game in the middle of the week next week, which is, again, it's just an interesting start to the season when you start on the 11th and then you don't play again until the, the following week. So definitely cool to see Ohio or OHSAA, excuse me, go to this early start in Friday night football to kick off the season and see some attention on the pitch rather than on the football field. Now, hey, I love football, don't get me wrong, but a little round ball getting some, some action is, is pretty cool too. And there's so many good teams in this area as well. Mm -hmm. We've seen so, so, many good, so much good soccer over the last couple of years. So many successes out of the local teams, whether it's on the girls' side or the guys' side. You know, just last year, Ottawa Glandorf girls in the state uh, finals. The Two years in a row for them, too. Exactly. Yep. And the Shawnee boys coming away with the first state championship in this area That's for crazy, any boys' yeah. soccer team. But year in and year out, we continue to see just soccer continue to grow and the game just continue to get better that we see. And, and it's fun to see. And it's it's great that they get an opportunity to kind of showcase that and, and to highlight that. Oh, no question. I mean, the, the WBL stacked with great soccer teams uh, on both sides. I mean, Ottawa Glandorf, boys and girls, right? Shawnee, boys and girls always, I mean, they're consistently good. St. Mary's boys and girls, Kenton boys and girls, both. Uh, with with some success and then you look at some other conferences NWC Bluffton has won <laughs> every NWC championship that has ever existed which is interesting for them but uh, the NWC a relatively young soccer conference and a lot of those younger teams are starting to get better teams like Allen East like we'll see here shortly and teams like Ada um, and so yeah, you're absolutely right. So so much good soccer around here. I know Spencerville started a program recently, and they're already showing some uh, some signs of life. And uh, man, it's just it's soccer, fall sports in general. Uh, we, we've got so much quality across the board, and uh, you, you know volleyball season about to be underway as well. And you talk about all the different great volleyball teams that we have in the area. And so, man, I, I think we're blessed to be able to work for a station like WOSN and cover these sports. But 
Uh, I think in Northwest Ohio, we're blessed in general to be sports fans and to be able to catch some really good athletic events throughout the entire week, every week uh, throughout the school year. Yeah, absolutely. As we have reached eight minutes left to go here in the half. And you, know, you mentioned, you know, obviously we get to see so many good different teams in so many different sports doing what we do. WOSN continues to bring so many local games to, to the area and for everybody to see. It really helps the outreach, helps these kids. It helps everybody kind of be able to see you know, who we have and, and, and what goes on in this area, whether it's soccer, football, um, volleyball, like you mentioned, you know, so many teams in the volleyball. I mean, look at the area of volleyball teams mm -hmm. that reach state. There's just so much going on here in the fall. So happy that high school sports is, is back up and running and, and happy that WOSN will be here to bring that all to you all fall long. No question. Don't forget, at WOSN, we are a nonprofit, right? We are supported by viewers. And so uh, anytime, especially now is a great time to make a donation in any size uh, as a way to say thank you and as a way for us to, to keep bringing you great coverage. So uh, you can head to WTLW.com. You can click donate here. Uh, you can also call into the station. And um, again, it's, it's great to be able to bring you games at, at no extra cost to you, uh, but we definitely appreciate and uh, rely on the support of, of viewers and also all of our great advertisers. And so here's Ryland Jones continuing to go to work. It's nice feed on the inside. This one gets knocked out of bounds. Mustangs will keep it on the throw in. Aubrey Young checks back into the game with 6.43 to go. So Lydia Payne coming back into the game for the Mustangs as Alana Whitmore takes a seat. Jones works on the one-on-one. -on -one. And the official is going to say that one actually will go back to the Wildcats. So they get the opportunity on the throw-in to work it up the sideline. Yeah, Jones thought that the Wildcats hit it out, so she just let it go. And referee said not so fast. Good job by the crew tonight, by the way. We mentioned them in the first half, but uh, they've done such a nice job. Here's Jordan working through some traffic. She's going to get tripped up, whistle blows. Dribbles through three defenders, draws a foul, and a free kick. That's an impressive play right there from Riley Jordan, the sophomore. Now Ryland Jones takes the free kick. She's going to send it up. Looking for Jordan, not able to get around, but just out of uh, the reach of Steyer. Excuse me, Steyer that time is she kind of mistimed her jump, but fortunately for Ken, that one was going wide of the net. As the officials now are going to talk about it to see whether or not this was a goal kick or a corner, and the call is going to be a corner kick for the Mustangs. Yeah, he initially said goal kick, but thought about it and switched the call. I actually... I think I have more respect for referees that are willing to change their call after thinking about it, right? I think too many times referees will make a bad call and then they'll just stick with it because there's a little bit of pride involved there. But uh, a good job by the referee, Randy Keeler, down there who realized that he pointed to the wrong spot and just changed the call. So that time a little bit of a different strategy as Jones sent that one towards the near post. This one's going to get knocked out by Kenton, so another opportunity here for the corner. Ryland Jones lines the kick up. Sends it into the box. This one's going to be high and goes over the net. And it'll go back to the Wildcats. <clears throat> 420 left to go here in the game. Allen East on top, four to nothing. Take a look at the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Kyla Bostetter came out of the game. She's on the sidelines. She took her shoes off, and she's walking around. Looks like she's not going to come back into this game. Kenton still playing hard, playing aggressive, trying to keep the ball at their feet, win some possessions. Going to have a handball call this time against Allen East. Free kick coming up for Kenton. See, I mean, 344, not a lot of time left, but for a team that hasn't scored any goals, a lot of times if you can at least put one into the net, you feel a lot of momentum. You feel a lot better about yourself. There's a big difference psychologically between seeing a zero and seeing a one, right? If you can put the ball into the back of the net, that's big time for your team going forward. So we'll see if Kenton can get something going here. 
toward the end of this match and he put something on the board. Another throw in coming as Kenton gets positioned here on that far sideline. I mentioned earlier that there's one senior on this Kenton roster. Uh, hasn't played tonight though. So this is a team that has played without any seniors. Miller on the far sideline, going to take the throw in. Nice hustle play to get down there and force the issue. I'm being told that she is injured too, so hopefully she can get better and get out there and be a leader for her squad. That's 16 Angel Forrester. Under three to go in the game. Allen East with the throw in. Jones plays it at her feet, gives it over to Miller. Miller sends it into the box, gathered up by Steyer. As Steyer looks to send this one deep. She has a big leg on her. We've seen her cover a lot of ground with that ball. That time, a little bit of a miss hit, but still ends up being played as a good ball at the feet of her teammate. An opportunity here for Kenton as it gets through that back line of Allen East, but Ashley Hawk, as she has done all game long, does a great job of getting to the ball, playing it up, and making sure it stays out of trouble. Yeah, Hawk's been fantastic back there. The Allen East defense has really relied on her to clean up any messes that have been created by the Kenton offense. So far, she's been up for the task. This one's going to get sent out. It'll stay with Kenton. Wildcats play it in on the long throw in. Allen East able to send that one back, but Kenton gathers it back up for the possession. This one's going to get poked down. It'll go back to the Mustangs with a minute 30 left to go in the game. Looks like Allen East is going to be able to secure this one, come away with the first victory of the season as this young Kenton team, I think, just kind of ran out of steam. We saw them play uh, really strong in that first half. They stood tall. A couple of fortunate breaks on their side kept Allen East out of the back of the net. But then as we turned into the second half, Allen East made some adjustments and I just think you're seeing the youth and inexperience of Kenton come into play on a couple of these shots. And, you know, like we mentioned earlier, you know, it's not indicative of the team that they're going to be. It's just sure. right now some of the growing pains that they're going to have to go through. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point, right? Well, a team that's this young, when you see them at the beginning of the season, they're going to look a lot different when you see them at the end of the year. So, you know, it's a tough first game against a really good team that's returned a lot, that won 11 games last year. But... You know, you've got a lot of season to play and a lot of time to grow as a team and, and become more cohesive as a unit. And then on the other side, you take a look at Allen East, and they're going to come away and they're going to have the victory. Looks like they're even going to get the shutout tonight and have the four-goal win. But as they walk away tonight, they're going to be thinking that they left a lot of goals out there on the pitch tonight as they feel like they probably should have had three or four more goals in that. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about that. If they watch this film, you see a shot from Kenton, the best chance that they've had all night just missing up and probably a little bit left. But, yeah, if you're Alan East, you watch this tape in the first half, you're definitely thinking, my goodness, we could have won this game by a lot more. And, and that feels really good for a team like this, that, you know, four goals, four nothing win is a really nice win. But when you know that you've got a lot more in, the, in you moving forward, that's, that's a lot of confidence, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. As this one comes to a close, Alan East holds on for the victory. They are going to open the 2023 season with the win to move to 1-0. Kenton, 0-1 on the young season, but we said both of these teams, a lot of growth still to come, and they're both going to walk away from this game, I think, thinking that, you know what, there's, there's a long way for them to go and a lot more potential. Yeah. So that is going to wrap it up for us here on the first game. A doubleheader here tonight at Allen East as the Kenton and Allen East boys will take the pitch next. WSN will have that broadcast for you as well. We'd like to thank our sponsors one last time, the Kenton Moose, tonight's scoreboard sponsor, and our goal sponsor, R.D. Jones Excavating. We appreciate everything that you guys do. I'd like to thank our crew as well. Megan doing the editing. we got Jacob working the cameras. You guys do a phenomenal job. We get the easy stuff. We get to sit here and watch and talk about it. You guys do all the hard work. We appreciate everything you guys do as well. One final time from Allen East. For Evan Skillner, I'm Nate Garlock. The Allen East Mustangs come away with the victory to open the season. Four to nothing. Have a great night, everybody.